to be praised. Come on and put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. take a little shift tonight, a pause from the series Transformation and Pain. We will resume on another day, but today we're going to talk about prayer, worship, and praise. Prayer, worship, and praise. My personal life, my personal experiences with God since being a son of God, since receiving that which was given to me by grace, the salvation of the Lord, has always been about war. It's always been about battles. And not too long ago, I was in a place where, okay, come on, God. Why I always got to seem like I'm fighting? Why I always got to seem that I got to fight a new battle every single day. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. If I run over here, it still meets me over there. If I run from here, it still meets me over there. If I cry out here, it's still there. Lord, no matter where I go, it seems that I got to fight. And even on last week, the Lord said to me, he said, I want you to tell, I was speaking, and while I was speaking the week before, he said to me, he said, I want you to tell my people to fight back. And even just a few minutes ago, before the camera came on, I paced back and forth listening to, you know, what we were listening to, the word of God. And the Lord says, somebody in this room right now is hurting beyond our sight. He said, we don't see them. We don't, we don't, we don't understand how deep the clutches of the adversary has gripped him. And it reminds me of the compassion of Christ. You know, a minister without compassion, he can't see. He's just preaching words, hard words, until it's his time to go through. But I can see in this moment, there's somebody a little bit farther behind than some of us. And Christ will go, he will leave the many and go get the one. And the word went out, the war cry went out on what to do. The war cry went out before the camera came on on what to do. It's time to pray hard. It's time to worship not only understanding that God deserves your worship but also understanding that as you worship you win. And not just win but win in Christ Jesus. 
the warfare cry went out that it's time to lift up your hands and to give God praise. It's time to fight back. I've experienced in my personal life a weariness on a day when I did not expect it. You see, sometimes you're working good, you're bringing in a good paycheck, ministry look good, wifey talking right, acting right, looking sexy, husband doing right. I don't know why this old joker still looking handsome, but he look good to me, I heard a wife say. <laughs> Children doing right. I'm talking, I ain't talking about when, when everything is looking wrong. I'm talking about when everything is looking right and then you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden it seems like you're tired. Like you want to quit. Like I don't got no more strength, Lord. What, what else you want me to do? I done fought all of my strength out of me. That's a person who doesn't know how to fight. That's a person who has taken the armor and the weaponry that has been given them by the Most High God and turned them aside for his selfish own armor, his own mind, his own emotions, his own way of feeling and his own way of thinking. God told me a couple of months ago, even a couple of years ago, he said, just because you're wrong don't mean I'm not alive. He said, just because you won't walk by faith and not by sight doesn't mean that I'm dead. He said, just because a man sins, it doesn't mean that Jesus didn't die for him. And that told me something. That told me that you can be so far from that which is spiritual, the mind of Christ, and be so close to the carnal mind and the fleshly nature of man. And so this is a prelude to what's to come is to excite you. It's to motivate you. That if you don't have no prayer partner, it's time for you to pray. If there's nobody to get up with you and at 3 o'clock in the morning because they're tired, you got to get up by yourself. If, if, if you can't get off work, then you're going to have to learn how to pray in between going and coming. If time doesn't permit, who said time gave you permission to pray anyway? We discipline ourselves in time. We tell time what we want to do within its boundaries because time is a boundary. But it never holds bound the word of God to your life. God can talk to you at three in the afternoon and three in the morning. And take you out of time. And show you how to fight. He can talk to you at three in the afternoon. When the sun is about to go down. And take you right out of time. And show you. How to stand in your victory. And so I will sleep. And the Lord came and his hand came into my body and took my spirit out of my body and turned me around and said, look at yourself. And I saw myself laying on the bed. And as I looked at myself, I began to look around at my frame. I had no physical body. I was all spirit being. Had no color. It was no color to it. It was just there. It was just a color that I cannot describe to you in the physical. It wasn't light, nor was it darkness. It was just alive. And he took me down the hallway of some project buildings. And he stood me in front of the door to the corridor. And through the little glass that allows you to see from one side to the other. Because sometime in the physical, if you don't know what to look through, you won't know how to win. Come on, catch that. 
if you don't know how to look to see how to win, you it may possibly well be that you will never know how to win. And so as I stood there, I noticed that I was jumping back and forth like a boxer. I looked through the glass and I saw one of my brethren in a battle with a demon. I saw the brethren and I saw the demon. The brethren had on his regular clothes that you would wear every day. And the demon had on his garment. He had on a cloak. And inside the head of the cloak, I could see two fiery eyes. Fiery like a, like a laser dot would be red. They were red like that. And they were deep in back, the back of his head. And I, I could see no face. But he had a mouth because I heard his words. He spoke to the brethren in a spiritual language. Notice I didn't say a heavenly language. I said a spiritual language. Meaning a language not understood in the physical. The mind can't comprehend this language. And when he spoke to the brethren, the brethren shrunk down into his clothes and into his shoes. And then the brethren spoke back and the demon got larger and he laughed. And then he spoke back and the brethren got smaller into his clothes and into his shoes. And that battle went on outside of time. For I don't know how long, but I know a multitude of words went back and forth. And while this is going on, the Lord is in my corner and I'm bouncing back and forth like a boxer before the bell rings. And I said, Lord, I was anxious for war. Don't be anxious for battle, but you better not be afraid. Anxious soldiers make mistakes. We got people watching and people in this room. You're anxious in your situation. You're going to make mistakes. You have to wait on the Lord and trust in him to give you that bell, bing, to let you know when it's time to fight. And I'm telling you, the bell is swinging. Bing 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 You wanted him to answer your prayers. You've been praying. You've been praying. You've been praying. And he's answering your prayers. And he's telling you it's time to fight. And this is your way out. Bing 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 bing. And so I'm watching the battle and I'm anxious and I'm saying, come on, Lord, let me in there. I know how to fight. You taught me how to fight. Let me in there. Help my brethren. And the Lord said, peace, be still. Stand down. And I couldn't move. When God said be still, it mean be still. It don't mean do anything. It don't mean retreat into your own mind and think of a way to fix your situation. It means be still. Don't move. Don't do anything. Just pray. Just worship. Just glorify the name of the Lord. But you better not put a physical action to fix anything. And so I stood there and I watched the battle go on until my brethren disappeared in his shoes. And now I'm looking at the demon that had one statue when I first saw him. Now he's bigger. And he's badder. And he's bolder. And he's laughing. Because he knows who's coming for the next round. But he's under the assumption that this next one that's coming doesn't have on a sufficient armor. 
And I'm telling you that the armor of God, when God give you the armor, it's sufficient for you. God is saying, stop being weak and stop being feeble. Me, what I gave you is more than enough for you to stand. And so the door opened, click, and the bell went bing, bing. And the Lord said, go now. And so I jumped in the hallway right where the brethren were standing, except I did not fit in his shoes. Nobody can fight for you, but we can fight together. But if you don't pray for you, and I'm praying for you, it's like I'm fighting you. God got to fight you to get you to surrender to agree. God said, fight. So I said, it is written. No weapons that are formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rise up against me to judge me falsely, I now condemn. That's my inheritance and my righteousness is of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And the demon went. And then he spoke. A funny language that I didn't understand. And then I spoke. It is written, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And he shrunk. And the battle went on outside of time. What do I mean by outside of time? We are in the body, but we are spirit beings. We walk not only in this physical realm, we also walk in the spiritual realm. We are tri-unity beings, spirit, soul, and body. And so we have the ability here to walk on earth, and we have the ability to walk by faith and not by sight in a realm where our body doesn't have to go. We have the power of prayer, the power of worship, or the vehicle. Of prayer and the vehicle of worship. And so the battle was going on, and I'm speaking every time I speak, I'm saying it is written. Why? Because I learned in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was fighting the devil, he didn't sing a song only, he said words. He said words. He used a sword that was not of himself. He used a sword that belonged to his father. Knowing that the sword that his father carried is unbeatable. And the victory that it brings is undeniable. And he wasn't afraid. Why? He had the fear of the Lord instead of the fear of Satan. And so in that room, while that battle was going on, I had no fear of the enemy. And the battle went on until the demon disappeared and the cloak just fell on the ground. And then the cloak disappeared. And then the Holy Spirit said, that's how you fight. Tell your brethren. That was years ago. Since then, I've allowed myself to become weary. When you don't trust God, that's weary. When you stop believing in the word, not the Bible, the living word, Jesus. When you stop believing in Jesus because of your outside circumstances, because of the circumstances that the enemy brings upon you and the circumstances that you bring upon you. When he uses them against you, what he's doing, he's blinding you a little bit more and a little bit more, and a little bit more, until you can no longer see how to live. God said, remind them, this is not a time to be tired. This is not a time to quit. He told me, take those words out of your mouth, and then go tell them to take those words out of their mouth, because the preacher cannot feed a baby, unless he has first ate the food that the baby gonna eat. Almost every parent I know tastes that baby the food before they give it to their child. They know if it's nasty or they know if it's good. More than likely, they know if the baby gonna like it or not. 
Some parents can tell you she ain't going to eat that. He ain't going to eat that. How do you know? I know. God knows what meal he has prepared for your strength. The reason that I won was because the, the armor that God gave me was sufficient. It was good enough. The reason that I won is because I ate the spiritual food that he told me to eat. The reason that I won is because when he spoke to me, faith came by hearing and by hearing by the word of God and I believed. You don't receive until you have believed. Somebody said, well, receive God and believe. I say believe God and receive. Somebody said, uh, receive God and believe. I said, believe God first. Because Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 6, it's impossible to please God. Those who come to God must believe that he is first before they partake of who he is. So you got to believe in God first. Before you are ever, ever able to partake in God's nature, which is higher, supernatural higher than our natural calm. And so God is talking to you today. He's talking to me and he's talking to you and he's saying it's time to fight. You've been getting knocked upside the head long enough. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of losing? Or are you so weary? Or did the enemy, your, did you allow the enemy to weary you in such a way that you can no longer pray? That you can no longer believe? Because if you can't believe, you can't receive. And I know his voice. My brother said something to me, and I heard within his words the whisper of the enemy. Whispering all day. Every time you want to change. Every, every time you want to receive God's rearrange. Every time you want to fast, every time you want to pray, every time you want to worship, every time you don't want to be busy because you know it's time to spend time with God. Every time it's time to give, when it's time to be consistent, when it's time to be sterile in God's word, you know who he is because he's whispering to you and God is saying he's not leaving until you make him leave. He's not leaving. Until you make him leave. Satan doesn't leave. Until the word of God makes him leave. And so can you see yourself fighting like that brethren. In that vision. In that dream. Fighting with his own words. Fighting in his own strength. Fighting. Fighting. Fighting in the common manner. That is unpleasing to the Lord in war. How long will you stay disobedient? How long will it take you to get up in the middle of the night? Get up in the middle of the day? Get up in the middle of the afternoon? How long will it take you? And when I say get up, I don't mean get up out of your physical sleep. I mean get up out of your spiritual sleep. Because a spiritually sleep soldier, even when he hears God call at 3 in the morning, he's not going to get up. The enemy's voice is whispering, you got work tomorrow. You got school tomorrow. You got to go to court tomorrow. You got to go to the ministry where ain't nobody coming again. And I, I mind you, I don't feel this way. I'm just saying what be on your mind. I'm just saying what Satan be throwing at you. But you heard earlier, you don't just quit, ever. There's a way to fight. The Father showed me the way to fight. 
And in order for you to use the sword that he gave you to fight with, you got to know the sword. You have to know the sword. When I was taking up martial arts, they gave me a weapon, and the weapon had three sticks. One in the middle, two chains, one chain on each side, and then two sticks. And when I went to swing the stick, I swung it like nunchucks, and it hit me in the head. And he said, wrong. He said, do it again. And I did it again. He said, wrong. He said, do it again. I said, no. He said, all right. Now you're growing because you learn that doing this thing wrong brought you pain. Don't you know already that staying out of prayer is painful? That staying out of worship is painful? That holding back your praise is painful. It's not hurting God. It's hurting you. Why? When you go into God's presence and to worship and praise, you are in a protection that the enemy can no longer distract you. He can no longer bother you. The whispers get quiet. It may be noisy as you go in, but when you get in, it gets quiet. And all you hear is the voice of the Lord. And so, is there noise on the battlefield of your mind? Because if it is, I understand it. And I'm telling you, God is calling you out of that noisy place and into a place of silence from it. Satan roars. And he seeks to destroy and to kill and to, and, to, and, to, and to steal. With his words. That's the beginning of his entrance. Into your being. Satan told Jesus, cast yourself down. You know the angels. This I'm my uh, minister lost in paraphrase. Cast yourself down. You know the angel's going to come and pick you up. They ain't going to let you hurt yourself. Jesus said it is written. Man shall live by bread alone. And only by bread alone. And God is waking us up. And he's saying you forgot how to fight, sister. You forgot how to fight, brother. You forgot how to fight. It is not with your tears. That are produced by carnal produced emotion. It's in prayer and consistent prayer. You know it and God know it and I know it and the devil know it. He closed the door in your prayer closet. We only pray when it seems feasible for us. And then in the midst of battle we start whining. God is not answering mature babies. Mature babies, what does that mean? That means that you grew up a baby into a, 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 a mature baby state. There's no more, there's nowhere else for you to go. If, if you take away adulthood from a child, they will always be babies. The maturity of God is in the receiving, the believing, and the receiving of his word. When you stop believing, you stop receiving, and when you do that, you stop growing. And oh wow, Minister Lawson, the Lord is telling you, you stop growing. Will you continue to grow? Okay, Lord, well you have to override that which you feel and begin to walk in that which I'm teaching you Second Chronicles chapter 20. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 20. This way the Father is showing you, there is no other way. And there are times, and everybody in this room know it, and some of you watching on camera, you know it. We try to change the way the Father told us to stand. We try to change it into a posture of crying. 
into a posture of heavy weeping. Oh Lord, oh Lord, when will this thing pass from me? When will this thing pass from me? You ever notice when Jesus prayed to the Father, is it possible to take this cup from me? When, when the Father answered him, he straightened right up. Some of us and some of you, you can't straighten up because you won't accept God's word. And because you won't accept God's word, you are constantly being encamped around by your adversary. We lose the adversary in worship. We defeat the adversary with prayer. When the praises of God's people goes up, God, the reason the blessings come down is because God inhabits the praises of his people. And we all know that where light is, Satan must flee. And so it's time to go in your closet, in God's closet, where all of your weaponry lies. The Lord said to me, Ara, do you think that in the closet of weaponry that I prepared for you, you think you only got prayer? He said, Ira, I got more weapons and more strategies than you possibly could imagine in yourself. And so I paused, I got quiet. And then he said, do you know that I have angels assigned to you that are weapons for you against your adversary? You know what he did? He took the idea from me that I could fight my own battle, my own way, and he rekindled within me that it's his armor and his weapons that caused me to win. 2 Chronicles, right? Twenty, chapter twenty. Verse eighteen. I, I would advise you to read the whole story. Because there's nuggets in there, jewels that are befitting for you. They're good for you. God put me here because He knows that there are people watching, there are people listening, there are people in this room who need to be awakened to who he is and who they are in him right now. There's no winning. Me and my brother discussed this. There's no winning without those two questions being asked. You don't know who you are, you're whining. You don't know who you are, you're getting bruised up and beat up. You don't know who you are. You don't know who God is. You don't depend on God. You don't trust in God. You don't count on God. You trust in the arm of flesh for your victory. Come on, if it's one person in this room who can defeat Satan and all his stronghold, stand up right now. Come on, Satan. I know you're sitting in here somewhere saying in somebody's mind you're bigger and you're better and you're bolder than God. Well, if you're here, stand up and let me see you beat the whole armor of the Most High God. But you won't dare. You won't dare call the loser onto the mat of victory because you're afraid. Still Afraid. God is dealing with people who are still afraid. He said, I never gave you that spirit. He said, I never gave you that spirit. You lie because you're afraid to stand in the truth. You cheat because you're afraid to be honest. You're jealous because you're afraid to trust God for your own supply. So you envy over somebody else's. God showed me today 
within myself where fear was. And then he said, deal with it and then go help them deal with it. You're afraid to be who God made you. So you add and you take away from the true testimony of salvation that is in your life. You make it seem more or less than what it really is. For instance, every time I told my testimony, I had to tell people, yeah, I was the big bad guy running the street, running the street. One day I was on the train preaching and the Lord used the person on the train to tell me, stop lying to tell the truth. I was preaching, telling people the testimony that I made up, trying to beat the devil with a lie, you a fool. Satan is the liar and the father of lies. How are you going to beat the liar with a lie? And you can't tell the truth that's been mixed with a lie because it's not the truth anymore. It's not even original. It's something else. And so are you strong in the Lord or are you not? Man of God, what's your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? God is talking to somebody. What's your problem? Your problem is you cannot receive my strength until you believe that I am. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second, Second Chronicles. Verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. God is saying, if you would but fall. God is saying in this victory, for you to receive this victory in your life right now, the explosion of the ministry is in your fall. You're worried about everything. That you're not supposed to be concerned with. But are you paying attention in this season right now. To what thus saith the Lord. All your victory. The explosion of the ministry. Is in your fall. Whatever the enemy is coming up against you with. The victory against him. Is in your fall. Not your fall to him. But your fall to your knees in worship. You know when God is around when you start repenting for real. When you start repenting for real and that your stomach is nauseous and you feel God digging that thing out of you and pulling that thing out of you and you praying in tongues and you can't stop crying and he digging that thing out of you. Brother, you back where you supposed to be. When was the last time? Tell the truth. I'm not saying tell me. Tell God the truth. Why? Falling to your knees brings you victory. Because when you worship God, God he surrounds you with himself. What devil can live in the atmosphere of purity? No germ, no disease, no sickness, no welfare, no curse, no witchcraft, no wiles of the enemy, no headache, no cancer, no asthma, no diabetes, no paralyzation of any kind, spirit, soul, and body can take over you because the presence of the Lord is surrounding you because you chose to focus on him. Satan is a focus stealer. A defeated foe smart enough to take your focus. Smart enough to occupy you with that which is going to perish in the presence of the Lord. And how good is God? Glory to God. How good is God that God has designed us and established us in Christ in such a way that when we stand before him, we won't melt and even the earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. Verse 19. And the Levites of the children of 
Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. God said, go remind them that there's a trumpet inside of them. There's a trumpet inside you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for giving me the victory over my adversaries. Thank you, Lord, for leading me into battle. I will give you praise, and I will give you honor, and I will give you glory, for you are my shield, and you are my buckler. Right now, God, right now, God, right now, God, there's a trumpet on the inside of you, but you got to watch it. Satan will steal your trumpet. He will take the very energy that you need to blow it. Because trust me, without energy from God's word, you can't blow a trumpet to an invisible God who has revealed himself to you as the I am. I am God. You can't fight a spiritual battle with physical tactics. I'm tired. It's not a spiritual tactic. It's a carnal tactic. I'm tired is not the way to victory. It's the way to sleep. It's the way to sleep. And don't think you're going to leave this meeting and go home and because you heard the word, you're going to be so strengthened. If you don't find yourself reading your Bible and worshiping God and pouring out them tears and getting that nose snotty, you fooling yourself because I already fooled myself. I already fooled myself. You do not go without the word of God and then claim and, cl and believe yourself fool. That's a fool. But it's been going six months, Lord. I don't care if it's been going, we've been married, how long? Going on 23, 24 years. The battle to divorce us, it ain't stopped yet, and we still ain't stopped standing. It ain't never going to stop until you don't have a physical body. You got to totally be in the kingdom of God outside your, your physical body in order for the warfare to stop coming up against your mind. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Soldiers are never called off the battlefield until it is time for them to fight it no longer. When a soldier dies in his physical realm, he no longer has the ability, the full capacity to fight that war anymore. As long as you are here, you have to fight. So now you got to watch it because the enemy will come and weary you in such a way and tell you, kill yourself. Kill yourself, Christian. God don't love you. God don't want you. God ain't around you. How come they believing? How come they growing? How come they this? And how come they that? I'm telling you, I don't know when my brother coming with it, but boy, the voice of the devil, the voice of the devil, the voice of the devil, it is your defeat. But you got to connect to it, you see, because he could talk all day. He talked to Jesus for God knows how long. And Jesus responded a certain kind of way each time. You have to use the strategy of the Lord or you're not going to win. So now you are in control of your destiny. I had to go in the room, sit down in the room, aware of the attack of the enemy on my life, and I had to choose life or death, so I choose life, and I began to copy Jesus, and I began to say, it is written, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of a sound mind and the power of discipline to walk by faith and not by sight. It is written. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am more than a conqueror. Why? He was trying to stop me from coming here today. He tried to stop me a little while ago with an incredible pressure. With an incredible pressure that would make 
a coward stay hidden in a room. I said, I will not be afraid of you. I will not cower because in my cowering is my death. But in my walk of faith lies the life of God in my connection with the almighty God. I will not turn. I'm going to say what God want me to say and it doesn't matter who don't like it or not. I'm telling you, God is saying it's time to fight. Get up and pray. Walk the floor. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in tongues. It doesn't matter who don't believe it. If you got the gift, you pass belief. You now know it. Some people are in a place of believing and they never enter into the place of knowing. See, I just don't believe God. I know that God is. I just don't believe in prayer. I know that God is. The proof of your strength is inside of you. And nobody knows it until you put it on display. How do you display it? In worship, in prayer, and in praise. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korhites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. The key to battle is praise and worship. When you are in praise and worship, your focus is on the Lord. How can the enemy put you to sleep when the focus is on light? How can the adversary put you to sleep if your focus is on light, but your focus is on what the other can do to you, what the devil can do to you? And then you want to walk like a time bomb, a dangerous disease in the midst of your brethren. You got to watch it. Oh, y'all been listening to me. I can become to you instead of a spoon of prosperity. The spoon that presents the curse. You can call me my atmosphere as a non-believing believer. And put my life in danger because you don't want to stand. I saw God tell a man who numbered an army the arm of the flesh you believe in is too much for me. Take this many men out the army. But Lord, I'm fighting tens of thousands of enemies and you giving me 300, 400. God said, Oh, guess what? You still depending on your own strength? I'm going to take that away from you too. See, somebody might feel stripped. Well, if you stop leaning on things that God don't want you to wear, maybe he'll stop stripping them from you. But oh Lord, oh God, as I lift my hands up, Lord, strip every man and strip every woman and strip every child in this room, in this atmosphere that's leaning on their own flesh. Strip them, strip them of their strength by giving them understanding of your word that it is not in the arm of the flesh that you're supposed to rely on. It is in the arm of the Lord. The Bible says Jesus is the strong arm of the Lord. Something was on my plate. I knew demons was fighting me. Because after all, I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to prosper. It's automatic. Hmm. Obedience is never automatic. Obedience is walked out by faith. And 
And when he had consulted with the people, verse 21, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. What kind of God do you serve? They want to know what kind of God do we serve that when the army is coming, he tells you to get up at three in the morning and begin to praise him. What kind of God do you serve that when it's time for court, he tells you get up and worship me? What kind of God do you serve that when Satan brings diabetes up against you, the Lord say lay hands on your body and begin to glorify me and magnify my name. My name. I said what God would God would God. A God who is a God of extraordinary strategies. He's not like the judge. He's not like the cop. He's not like the ambulance worker. He's not like the doctor in the hospital. Jesus is the extraordinary strategist. How do I know? Because his name is wonderful. His name is counselor. His name is almighty God. And so how are you going to lose if your confidence is in the almighty God. What devil, what foe? See, you shake your head now. Glory to God. You shake your head yes now. But when God asks you for proof of your faith, then we'll see. The proof that we disagree with the spirit of divorce is in our day-to-day -day choice to stay married. Come on, Pastor. Talk to me. Do you nod your head now? And you shake your head because you feel the thunder of God's word knocking on your heart. But when it's time to believe God for food for your house, and he give you the strategy, will you do the strategy in order for you to eat? That's going to show me that you believe in the instruction of the Lord. No more weak men. No more weak men. No more weak men. I said, God is saying by his spirit, no more weak men. No more weak men. No more weak men, God is saying. No more weak men. No more weak men. No more weak men, God is saying. No more weak men. No more weak men, God is saying. No more weak men. Weak men can't carry the armor in Ephesians 6. Because the armor of God has weight. The only person who can carry the armor of God is a person who that ha has received grace. And I can't even get into that. That'll take us into a whole other class. But the person who has received grace is strong enough to carry the whole armor of God. Well, man of God, you don't know. Okay, how come Satan can't wear it? How come Satan can't wear the armor God gave you to wear? Because it's not designed for darkness. We read last week, it's designed for those who were called out of darkness and into his marvelous light as lights. There was a time I had to walk the floor crying and I had to keep repeating the word of God to myself. No, you are a child of light. I don't care. I don't care. I know your body hurt. I know you're feeling tired. I know you're feeling weary. Ain't no man can heal you. Ain't no doctor. All they got is medicine that don't work. But I believe that Jesus is my medicine that do work. Greater is he does it. I mean crying. I mean, I mean, brother, I mean crying. Do you know how I feel? When you can't breathe and no man can be your oxygen, where are you, God? Where are you, God? This pump not working. This medicine not working. Them steroids not working. 
God is talking to somebody. He knows the cancer is there. But he is the healer of the cancer. But you have to believe before you receive. You have to believe that God is. Before you benefit from him. And God's like, get up. He's like, this is the hour to get up. Don't, don't wait. Get up. Get up now. Go home praying something that's in you right now. Today I was praying stuff that I haven't prayed since years ago. I wasn't afraid to tell God the truth. I wasn't afraid to ask him for stuff. And I wasn't asking, I'm saying, Lord, dig down deep into the bowels of my spirit and remove that which doesn't please you. Lord, I don't care. I don't care what I got to go through for you to change me. I need change. I need to be rearranged. Lord, sometimes you, 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 we get conformed to this world, Lord. But Lord, if you would, according to your word, which tells me who you are, don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. God showed me something. In the blink of an eye, our ministry, my brother, could have been over. He showed me plain as day. In the blink of an eye, in one wrong decision to lean on flesh, all this could have been ripped asunder. It's time for warfare. It has always been time. But you know what we do? We fall asleep after we don't discern him for a little while in our walk. He becomes so subtle because Satan will wait as long as he has to wait in order for you to get trapped. He know you're an angry man. So, oh, he hasn't been falling into my traps lately. Well, I'm going to keep setting him until he bite one. And when he bite one, this time, I'm going to cut his head off. This time, if he let me in, I'm going to make his last state and his last fit of rage more worse this time than the last time. I know she got jealous eyes. I know she's envious person. I know she don't like to be told what to do. I'm going to wait. I'm going to weary her and keep shooting thoughts at her and ideas at her and pictures out of her mind. And then that time, that day, when she be like, I don't want to fight no more. Don't be telling me what to do. You ain't my master. You ain't my, you my husband, but you ain't my God. Oh, and he's slipping there. He going to make your present state worse than your last. God is saying, fight, right? Your life is dependent on it. And not only your life, my life is dependent on God. And guess what? Some of your lives is depending on the word that come out of my mouth. Let's just tell the truth. I am an authority in the kingdom of God. And some of these words are your life-saving words. So move me. You miss something. Move him. You miss something. Move her. Move her. Move him. Move you. And something is missing. Stand up not only for yourself, but stand up for others around you. Strengthen up and man up for something. Why? Why? Let's look at this and let's get out of here. I'm going to show you why and then we'll pick it up. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you here? See, I'm never going to read this whole chapter to you. You know what I do. I set you up for homework. You see, if you don't go finish reading, you will miss out on the rest of the meal. There is technique to warfare and instructions in battle. If we do not follow them, we will not gain the victory. Aren't you tired of victory unseen? I mean, aren't you tired of victory unseen? Come on, everybody look at me for a minute. How many, how many victories you hear you got, but you don't see you got? I had to ask the Lord to the Lord, I need to see. The victory that you gave me. So now I'm willing to hear. 
What thus saith the Lord? Oh, you ain't listening to me. You see, in order to see the victory, you got to be willing to hear the word of the Lord. Why? God may tell you, get up at three this morning. But I'm tired, Lord. Well, you ain't never going to know if that was the moment. Satan is stealing again. Lord, but I'm too tired. Yo, man, turn your meal over. Stop being greedy. Stop being led by the spirit of greedy and get on your knees. If food is your excuse and food is making you heavy, turn over your plate, get light, and get in the presence of the Lord. Stop it. <laughs> I ain't going to look at you after I look at you. I'm hearing stuff. I can just fire but now, nah, let me look at you because it's coming from over there. If you, if, if your excuse is, Lord, I'm too heavy, uh, uh, then stop eating. Your prayer life is dependent upon it. Eat later. Why you can't fast six hours and then eat one hour in the evening? What's the problem? What's the problem? Oh, I got to eat because I, I need medicine. Why you can't fast on smoothies that are, are, are no, no, no tasty meat? But no, I don't, I don't want no meat. You were born on meat. And meat ain't kill you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? They saying right now, they disrespecting God's word. Oh, oh, the non-believer, you can't eat pork. Why not? God said, whatsoever I receive in Thanksgiving, I can eat. I can eat an octopus eye and not go to hell. And you can murder a man under the name of your God and go to hell because my God is in charge. And murderers don't enter the kingdom of heaven. But people who eat pork do. You got to know what you're doing. And you got to watch the voices of the adversary. God said they had to praise him. They had to fall on their knees. And they had to get up at a certain time in the morning in order for them to win the battle. When is he telling you to get up? Oh, he's going to talk to every last one of us. Me being a preacher, understanding that the confirmation is probably sitting in all of us right now already. It probably was there before you came. He prepped us up all those years. Warmed us up all those years. Gave us word all those years. Now it's time to battle. If you don't fight now, how many more years will you stay the same? Come on, Pastor. I hear you talking through my body. I hear you talking through my body. If you don't fight now, how many more years will your life resemble deadness? If you don't fight now, will there be a better ending for you? Or will the boy get taken? You seen the movie Taken? Let's look at the enemy. When he come to steal, he come to steal. When he come to destroy, he come to destroy. When he come to murder, he come to murder. What part of that we don't understand? You're not taking my eyes with diabetes. You ain't taking my toes. You're not taking my feet. You ain't taking nothing from me because every time I step into a room by myself, I'm giving God praise and I'm commanding you devil leave. And when you show up, I ain't going to keep telling you to leave. Didn't I tell you to leave? You think you're going to walk up in my house and put some deadly flu on my daughter? I heard you when you came through. Get out while everybody else running to the doctor and looking for medicine. I'm in my prayer closet. You ain't coming on my door. Amen. 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 It's 
spinning car fare, running around. I'm in my prayer closet. They may say, why he seem like he don't care? Why he don't run back and forth to the hospital with me? Because my mother ran with me and all her running couldn't heal me. But my grandmother was praying for me. And here I am. Let him run. But baby, I got you from a place where God lives. God lives in the prayer closet of the believer. What devil are you fighting? And every time he speak to you, you go on like this. And then he speak to you and you. And then when you speak to him, he get bigger. You know why the demon got bigger? When my brethren spoke to him? It's because when my brethren, when brethren are calm, they go, I'm tired. And the devil go, they go, I don't feel like fighting no more. I quit. And then the devil go, and then the stronghold gets strong. And then after they heard a word and get excited, emotional listeners, when they go back in private, they go, oh, 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 I can't wait to get away from them believers. Because I ain't believing. That stuff is heavy. Part one, prayer, worship, and praise. This is Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. Visit us at familyworship.live in Jesus' mighty name. Love you. Peace be still. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah.